what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, Darren, didn't you already do a torpedo video some time ago for this series? Why, yes. Yes, I did. That video was all about comparing the spatial torpedoes of Star Trek Enterprise with the story of the Mark 14 submarine torpedoes of World War II. Sadly, like several of my videos, that video was lost to the writhing, spasming fits of that roaming space furry we here like to call... The Salt Vampire. Oh! Ew! Dude! What the fuck? The etymology of the term torpedo is that it comes from a genus of electric rays and is derived from the Latin term torpere, meaning to be stiff or numb. This refers to the animal's ability to stun prey with its bioelectric attack. The word torpedo was first applied to a naval weapon by American engineer Robert Fulton, who used it as the name for his towed gunpowder charge weapon, intended to be used on the French Nautilus submarine concept way back in the 1790s. Yeah, I know, I was just as surprised as you. As mentioned earlier, I feel the NX-01's spatial torpedoes, whether intentionally or unintentionally, mirrored some of the problems that plagued the Mark 14 submarine torpedoes the U.S. used during World War II. For those of you who have watched Enterprise, you know just how weak and pathetic the spatial torpedoes depicted on the show were, even if they did manage to function correctly. It reminded me of how the U.S. Uh, submarine service entered World War II, the war with the greatest naval battles in human history in terms of firepower and tonnage sunk, with a weapon that had a greater than 50% failure rate. For the details on that kerfuffle, I recommend you watch Drakenefell's video on the subject. The link will be in the description. Oh, and pour yourself a cup of coffee or some other caffeinated beverage before you watch it. Drakenefell is very good at what he does, but he can be a little dry in his delivery. When it comes to torpedoes in Star Trek, and specifically the ones used by Starfleet, we've only seen three major design innovations. Uh, Star Trek Enterprise showed us the advancement of torpedoes from the nuclear-tipped spatial variety to the photonic sort. The advantages being not only a higher explosive yield, but also a variable one. This means that if they wanted to fire a kinder, gentler torpedo for the purposes of disabling an enemy rather than destroying them, they could do so. Photonic torpedoes eventually gave way to photon torpedoes, which are essentially the same weapon, but with presumed refinements in propulsion and explosive yield. These are the predominant torpedoes of the franchise, seen in TOS, TNG, most of Deep Space Nine, and Voyager. I say most of Deep Space Nine because it was on that show that we were introduced to the first big innovation in Starfleet torpedo technology in the quantum torpedo. Quantum torpedoes have, according to Michael Okuda's tech manuals, a maximum yield that is approximately twice that of the maximum yield of a photon torpedo, but that was never declared on screen. Through dialogue, they were identified as generally superior, however. Back on Star Trek Enterprise, even after the NX-01 got their shiny new photonic torpedoes, one could still see that they had plenty of the old anemic spatial torpedoes in their armory inventory. We can safely conclude that a lot of these were used in the Earth-Romulan War in the months and years following the cancellation of the show, and thus this was what Spock meant when he described this war being fought with, quote, primitive atomic weapons in his briefing scene in the classic episode Balance of Terror. Established by treaty after the Earth-Romulan conflict of over a century ago. As you may recall from your histories, this conflict was fought by our standards today with primitive atomic weapons and in primitive space vessels. As with the debut of photonic torpedoes, quantum torpedoes did not instantly replace all torpedoes used by Starfleet either. Indeed, the Enterprise was shown using both photon and quantum torpedoes in the battle with the scimitar in Star Trek Nemesis. We can assume that there was a transitional period where Starfleet had ships use up their stock of photon-type torpedoes as the quantum type eventually became the standard. I'm generally not a fan of how torpedoes were utilized in the J.J. films. Uh, one of the benefits of torpedoes when it comes to storytelling is that they are inherently suspenseful. 
They take time to get to the target. Half of the suspense in a submarine movie is the wait to see if the torpedo that was just fired hits the target and if it detonates on impact. In the J.J. films, however, they were more like rapid-fire bullets. They aren't very discernible from the phaser bolts in those films. If there's little to no visual distinction between a phaser blast and a torpedo, then why bother having two different weapon types in the first place? Before a bunch of you go down into the comments and say, but the Defiant, but the Defiant, let me just remind you that the Defiant had more than one type of phaser as well. So the Defiant gets a pass. The Defiant always gets a pass. Unlike Stuart Foley over at Trek Yards, I am not of the opinion that starships need an aft torpedo tube. Torpedoes, by their very nature, are guided weapons, and as such, tend to follow and hone in on their targets. So if someone is behind you, you don't need an aft torpedo launcher to hit them with a torpedo. This opinion of mine stems from having served on a warship that only had forward-facing weapons. USS Trepang, like most submarines in the United States Naval Submarine Service, had four forward torpedo tubes. The only submarine I'm aware of that has more than that are the boats of the Sea Wolf class, which have eight torpedo tubes, all facing forward. This class was designed during the Reagan administration, after all. Uh, the only ships I can see that would benefit from an aft launcher are the ones that are not as maneuverable like maybe those of the Galaxy class, you know, the, the bigger ships. This last opinion of mine is that, given the emphasis of the torpedo tubes in Klingon ships, I tend to think that Klingon torpedoes are bigger and possibly more powerful than their Starfleet counterparts. I've got no evidence for this, it's just a feeling I get based on how much emphasis the Klingon Bird of Prey and the D7 slash Katinga seem to have when it comes to their forward tube. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support this channel, please consider purchasing a copy of my book, Captain Steel and Other Stories, on Amazon, especially if you are a fan of speculative fiction.